Hello YouTube, this is IDNO. I'm here to bring you another episode of Advanced Redstone Circuits. So last time we went ahead and uh, built some serial devices and today what I thought I would do is show you guys how to make some memory. Uh, now there are many types of basic memory. Uh, I went ahead and built a few of the simplest RS NORs here um, and what they consist of is a memory cell with a set that says this is a one or a reset that says, you know, this is no longer a one. Uh, and, you know, all these work pretty much exactly the same. You know, power goes in, stores, you know, and they, they all have a reset. Now, these are fine for basic things like, you know, uh, storing a small value while you're doing something. Or, say you have a door that you want to stay open, you know, that would work. This would work perfectly for that. Um, but, you know, this is, these are, these are fine, but, you know, when you want to use something like a a uh, bigger system, like a binary system, you want to have more storage than just this. Uh, and so this is going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the uh, basic storage systems that you would, you know, you would build. So, uh, just a moment. Okay, so what we got here is, uh, you know, RS and R system. Now, you can build some uh, memory out of these. Now, I hesitate to call it RAM because what most people call RAM is actually just memory. But I will actually end up showing you guys how to make RAM. So, um, what are the basics of memory? You've got a set, a reset, and a read. Okay. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to build uh, two different versions. Uh, one of them is RSNOR based, which is this over here, and one of them is D flip flop based, uh, based off of the basal flop that I showed you guys the other day. Um, give me just a moment. And for those of you who are wondering why this video is a little late. Uh, it's because I went on vacation, so, um, apologies for that. What I'm actually going to do is, uh, do two videos and then release them side by side. One today and then hopefully one on Wednesday, maybe Thursday. So, kind of get that fixed up. So, anyway, so we got the line, the set line, sorry. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this built. So what this is doing here is this is the main set line. And when this is powered, you know, it goes down the line and says, this is what we'd like to store in there. But because we don't want it to store everything that we send down it, we're going to have another portion, which should be moved up one, uh, right here, which is the set. You'll have to excuse me, I haven't played Minecraft in uh, days. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this up here. And like always, I'm just going to build it once and then stack it for you, because uh, you don't really need to see me build it eight times. So, all right. So you guys might recognize this part right here. This is the basal flop from earlier. And throw that there. Cut that off because we don't want it bleeding back. Okay. So we've got the main memory cell here, and this is good, but this isn't this isn't 100 percent. What we need from this is the way to read this information once it's stored, otherwise it's useless to us. So let's go ahead and throw these things together here. So this is our read, and what this does is it, in, well, it inhibits this right here. Let's see. This torch right here, while we do not have anything stored. So you don't want it to be sending ones when there aren't actually ones. Um, or zeros when there's not actually zeros. Um, and really, you, you would only use this uh, when you need the information. This is this is what is defined as uh, RAM right here. Um, it's not addressed or anything, but it is addressable and independently writable, um, which is what most people have seem to have an issue with with these things. So let's go ahead and get this finished here. Now, um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to build this, and then in the next video I'm going to show you guys how to address it. Um, that seems like a pretty good idea. So let's go ahead and stack it. And then this is pretty simple. So everything I make is too wide stackable um, because it just makes it so much handy or er, handier. <laughs> oh, uh, it was weird. Don't know what just happened there. Okay, well, anyway, um, so we've got our set and reset. We need to work here. And the main difference between this and an RSNOR based one, which I'll show you later, 
is that the RS NOR version is going to need a set, reset, read, and that should be it. Uh, this one only has a set and a read, which makes them much easier to uh, to address. Oh, well, it looks like I lost my connection. Give me just a moment here. All right, sorry about that. It looks like it's back up and running. Don't know why it was doing that, but uh, okay. Um, all right, so we've got a single word of RAM here, and this is uh, eight bits of information or a byte of information. And um, let me go ahead and stack this so we can get some variation going here. Actually, <laughs> I don't need to stack like that. I need to stack like this. Okay. Position one and position two. Stack. Let's do two times. All right. I mean, this right here is pretty small RAM, um, all things considered. It's nice and short. Uh, it's five blocks long, but uh, I mean, I, I personally, I like it. It's fast, and it does exactly what it needs to. Um, you know, you don't have any huge banks of RAM because you've got a nice and tiny little fingerprint or footprint here. So let's go ahead and store this value here in 1. So now this value right here should be stored in 1. Let's say we want to some, store something else in something in another, you know, another location. So we go like this. We'll do the exact opposite. And we will store that in two. Now, even though we've just went ahead and stored a different value in two, one will retain its, its uh, current value. And we'll store all ones in three. All right, all well, zeros, sorry. So what we do is we want to read, unpower this. And you'll notice, since these lines right here are powered, it doesn't power this which then powers these lines down here. This is how we're able to store information in our uh, computer system. Okay, so let's go ahead and try the next one. Next one should be the exact opposite. And the last one should be all blank. All right, it is important to note that these are actually inverted systems, so you will have to you know, take that into account when you're storing the information into it. Um, either invert the information going in or out. So that way you don't end up you know, mixing up information. Now, uh, the next one I'm going to show you guys is actually a RS NOR based one, but the way I use it, it actually clocks it like this one right here. Um, so you have three lines, but two of those lines are actually hooked up together. So you end up with a uh, similar system, it's just, you know, a little bit bigger. So, or a little bit smaller. Well, significantly smaller. So. <laughs> So go ahead and get this built up. Um, this one is a little bit taller, but I mean, I'll, you know, actually I'm going to build it side by side so you can see the difference. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. Mm, that should be tall enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's, this new one is actually uh, 13 tall. So... It is a little bit bigger than this one, which I believe is like six or seven. But I mean, honestly, it's, I, in my opinion, it's worth it to have the extra size because you end up with such a small footprint that it doesn't take up any space at all. So let's go ahead and get this built. It's been a few weeks since I built this, so you'll have to excuse me if I mess up a little bit. Uh, okay. that up. And then this, let's see here, cover that so it doesn't cover that. All right, and again, I make everything stackable so it, you know, you don't end up with uh, weird crosstalk and, you know, annoying happens. <laughs> that was completely legitimately English, so. All right, and this right here is actually uh, probably my favorite part of this design. Uh, this is the RS NOR, which you might recognize from over here, where you have a set, and 
interesting. Oh, uh -huh, okay. Excuse me. That needs to be there. A set and a reset. Uh, whereas I'm just inverting the reset and the set, and you've got this right here. Now, if you'll recall, the uh, glowstone does not power redstone power down. So I can power this to reset it on all of them without having to have some kind of fancy contraption, you know, with, with any kind of repeaters. In fact, this device does not use any repeaters in it whatsoever. So um, it's, it's pretty fancy like that. So let's go ahead and get this here. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that the overall design of this is going to be slightly, uh, what's the term? It's going to look bigger than 3x2, but it's actually 3x2 stacked. So you don't want to confuse, I don't want to confuse you guys by saying this is only 3x2, but it looks 4x2. So let's go ahead and get the move there. And then for stackability's sake, I'm going to go like this. And what do we got here? All right. Now just the last part, we've got this. I guess I didn't need to put that up so high. I'm going to go ahead and move it down on the ground. So we got a difference here. Okay. So I went ahead and fixed it, and I'm going to show you guys the uh, stackability here. And this is where the, st I guess, stackability is shut off. Okay, so I'll do stack three, so you guys can see the difference. Or actually, stack two, sorry. Okay, so this is the same amount of memory, but as you can see, it takes up the space of only two of them. Now, if we were to say, this isn't that much of a difference, but say you wanted to have more than uh, three bytes of memory, uh, of words, of RAM, of things and stuff, you would need to have significantly more space. I'm actually going to go ahead and clear some stuff out so we don't end up cutting through stuff. Um, didn't think that one through. Okay. And um, you'll see just exactly why that memory is so much more valuable than this memory. Uh, I mean, they're both very, very nice. It just, you know, in some instances, space is better than the uh, ease of height, I guess. All right. And actually, I can do... No, I can't. I can't do that. There's two. Let's stack this once. All right, so there's six. Let's go ahead and do the same for this one. Okay. Stack one. And now it is broken. What did I break? Uh... Oh, yes. Yes, that'll do that. Okay. Um, undo. Don't know why. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. I'm dumb. Stack two. All right. So as you can see, this is nine bytes of RAM, and this is six, and this is still smaller. Um, the differences get even more drastic when you get, you know, into further. Um, if you guys recall, I showed you guys, I showed you a 128 byte, uh, 64 word bank of RAM over here, and it was not much bigger than this. I mean, uh, you know, 16 bytes of RAM, that is, that is pretty acceptable size, uh, and to have it, you know, in this big of a space is just fantastic, so... Um, anyway, so in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to address this RAM, which is just a series of decoders and, you know, lines going in, busing and stuff. It'll be, uh, boring <laughs> for me, I guess. But, um, I think that it's important that you guys know how to do it because you've got, uh, you know, you've got to know these kind of things 
for when you're building bigger systems like computers, CPUs, stuff like that. So, um, and again, this is this is going to get into some stuff that requires some decent knowledge of binary logic, and uh, you know just the binary counting system in general. Uh, otherwise, you know you're going to be kind of caught like a fish out of water. Um, oh, I guess I should show you guys the RAM working, so you know that it does work. So let's go ahead and store a value here. So uh, what I when I said that I clocked them together, what I do is I pulse this first. Okay, so that resets that, and uh, then I pulse this. So it stores the value. Now, nothing's showing up because this line right here, which is the read, is still dark. Do that, and the value shows up on the lines. Uh, this one is not inverted. It uh, stores the value that you send into it, so that's nice, I guess. Um, but I mean, like I said, it's it's very fast. I think it's like two or three ticks throughout the whole thing and uses zero repeaters, which I think is just great. So, anyway, um, I think that should be it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, if you like it, subscribe. If not, um, you know, probably still subscribe. I'd enjoy that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.